Let's talk about compositions of transformations, which means performing more than one transformation on a figure. For example, we could rotate and then translate a figure. We could reflect it and then translate it and then rotate it. Or we could reflect it and then reflect it and then translate it and then reflect it. You get the idea. You can perform as many transformations on a figure as you want to. The transformations that we'll be using today are all the isometric transformations, such as translations, which is adding a value of A to X and adding a value of B to Y, moving that up, down, left, or right, or reflecting or rotating. On the screen now you see the rules for reflecting in the Y or the X axis, as well as reflecting in the line Y equals X. You may or may not have memorized those first two because it's a lot easier to just count from the pre-image point to the Y axis and then from the Y axis to the image. Same thing for the X axis, but you certainly could use those two rules if you would prefer. We did learn that for reflecting in the line Y equals X, using that rule is the simplest way. And then for our rotations, that was pretty much the only way we learned how to perform a rotation was by changing the pre-image coordinates according to each of these rules. So if you don't have at least the bottom four rules on this screen memorized by now, you need to memorize them. So let's take a look at a few examples. We're given the pre-image vertices A, B, and C, so let's go ahead and plot those on our graph. And we're supposed to perform two transformations. We're going to rotate 180 degrees clockwise around the origin, and then we're going to translate using the rule x minus 5, y plus 2. It's important to understand that we'll be rotating the original pre-image, the purple triangle that you see on the screen right now. We're going to rotate that and then get an answer. And whatever answer we get, that's what we're going to translate. You do not translate the original pre-image. You translate whatever the result of the first transformation was. Let me show you what I mean. In order to rotate 180 degrees, we use the rule negative x, negative y. So I'm just going to take each of my pre-image coordinates and change their signs. So my new coordinates look like this. They're the same thing as before, but with opposite signs. And I'll go ahead and plot those points on my graph, and I get this for the image of triangle ABC. So now I have triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And this is the triangle that I'm going to translate using this rule. I'm not going to translate the purple one. I already did something to the purple one. It became the green one. I'm going to translate the green triangle to become the orange triangle, which will be A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. Remember that to perform a translation, you can either count from your pre-image coordinate according to the rule, so I would go 5 to the left, and 2 up, and put a point. Or you can also just subtract 5 from the x-coordinates and add 2 to the y-coordinates to get to your final answer. Again, just make sure that you're subtracting 5 and adding 2 to the A prime, B prime, and C prime coordinates, not A, B, and C. And actually, before I do that, I want to remind you of something. Rotations and translations and reflections are isometric transformations, which means that whatever you get when you perform your transformation should look exactly like the original pre-image, just in a different place or in a different orientation. So what I have so far looks good, because these two triangles appear to be congruent. Nine times out of ten, when a student makes a mistake on these types of problems, it's because they had a brain fart, and they put a negative in the wrong spot, or they flip-flopped their coordinates. So let's say you'd had a brain fart and put your B prime there. Does that look right? No, of course not. Those two triangles aren't even close to being the same. So always double-check your answer as you work through these problems, because if I had done this incorrectly for... A prime, B prime, C prime, and then I'd used it to do this translation, then my final answer is definitely going to be wrong because the halfway point of my problem was wrong as well. So let's put that B prime back where it belongs, and here are the coordinates for my translation. I'm just subtracting 5 and adding 2 to each of these coordinates for A prime, B prime, and C prime, and that becomes A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, which is this triangle up here. So that was a composition of transformations because we applied more than one transformation to a triangle. Let's try another one. Again, we'll just put our pre-image coordinates on the graph to get started. And the first transformation that we'll perform is a reflection in the line y equals x. The rule for that is just changing around the order of your coordinates. x, y becomes y, x. So let's change around the order of each of these numbers and then plot that on the graph. So there is the 
first transformation that I'm doing to triangle ABC. Now I'm going to rotate 90 degrees clockwise, and it's the green triangle, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, that I'm going to do that to. I'm done with the purple triangle now. The purple triangle has been transformed into the green one, and I'll transform the green one into the orange one. The rule for 90 degree clockwise rotations is Y negative X. So I'm going to change the sign of each of my X values in the A prime, B prime, and C prime coordinates and flip around the order. So my new coordinates look like this. Put that on the graph, and there's A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. So as you can see, there's really nothing new for what we're doing today. You're just combining all of the things that you already knew how to do from earlier in the unit into more than one at a time. So let's also go in the reverse order. We've done this before with single transformations of looking at a graph and telling what kind of transformation occurred. It's just that we have two different transformations to describe this time. So focusing first on triangle DEF to triangle D prime E prime F prime, that would be a 90 degree clockwise rotation. There's a couple different ways that you can tell that. One, you could connect E to the origin and the origin to E prime and notice that that makes a right angle. You could also connect D to D prime, E to E prime, F to F prime, and notice that those lines crisscross over each other. They're not parallel, and that would be indicative of a rotation as well. You can also look at the coordinates and see how they changed from D to D prime. To get from D to D prime, I change the sign of X and I switch the order of X and Y. And that's the rule for a 90 degree clockwise rotation. So no matter which way you think about it, DEF to D prime, E prime, F prime was a 90 degree clockwise rotation. Then we have to figure out how we get from triangle D prime, E prime, F prime to triangle D double prime, E double prime, F double prime. Well, I see that they're basically the mirror image of each other. Our image is an upside down version of where we started, and that makes it a reflection. You can also connect E prime to E double prime and D prime to D double prime, and notice that those two segments are parallel but not the same length. That's indicative of a reflection. So you just have to identify what the line of reflection was, and that will always be halfway in between the pre-image and the image coordinates. Alternatively, in a situation like this, where you have a point that is both the pre-image and the image, that also tells you where the line of reflection is, because the only way you get a point to not move when you're reflecting is when that point is on the line of reflection. Either way, you should end up identifying that the x-axis is the line of reflection. So this was the composition of transformations that took us from triangle DEF to triangle D double prime, E double prime, F double prime. Let's try another one. Always make sure you're going in the right order, going from the pre-image, which has no apostrophes, to the first image, which has one apostrophe, to the final image, which has two apostrophes. So from triangle KEY to triangle K prime, E prime, Y prime, it was a rotation of 180 degrees. You can identify that by connecting your pairs of corresponding points and noticing that they cross over each other. And when they do that, they intersect at the origin. You can also compare their coordinates. Y was the point 6, negative 8, and Y prime is the point negative 6, positive 8. So that's a rule of XY becoming negative X, negative Y, and that's the rule for a 180 degree rotation. Then from triangle K prime, E prime, Y prime, to triangle K double prime, E double prime, Y double prime, we reflect it. This triangle is just the upside down version of this triangle. And it's tempting to just assume that it's the axis that you reflect it over, but always be sure to count because sometimes it's not the axis, it's a different line instead. And that's what we have this time. The distance from E prime to E double prime is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And half of eight is four. I know that the line of reflection has to be halfway in between E prime and E double prime, so four units away from E double prime, one, two, three, four, is negative one, and four units away from E prime, one, two, three, four, is also negative one. So this negative one, y equals negative one, must be the line of reflection. This is the composition of transformations that maps triangle KEY to triangle K double prime, E double prime, Y double prime. It's relatively easy to describe the composition of transformations that occurred when you see all three of the triangles on the coordinate plane. But it's actually far more common to have only two triangles on the plane at a time, and you have to kind of imagine where the one in the middle should have been. 
So it's going to take us two transformations to get from triangle GHI to triangle G prime H prime I prime. But there's no middle triangle to tell us how we got here. You have to look at the orientation of the triangles and figure out what kind of transformations would get you to where you need to go. For example, I see here that triangle GHI and triangle G prime H prime I prime are kind of mirror images of each other. They're not lined up the way that we're used to seeing, but they have the H's pointing at each other, and G and G prime are both on top, and I and I prime are both on bottom. So I'm going to start by reflecting. If I reflect triangle GHI in the y-axis, it would end up here, because I would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more to the left, and that's where ghost G would be. I'm not even going to give it a real name because G prime already exists. This is just a placeholder as we figure out how to get from GHI to G prime H prime I prime. Okay, so if I reflect this triangle in the y-axis, I end up at this purple triangle which is in the same orientation as where I'm trying to go, but it's not quite lined up. It's too high. Specifically, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units too high. So I could translate that purple triangle down 6 units, and that would take me to triangle G prime, H prime, I prime. So this is the composition of transformations that would take me from triangle GHI to triangle G prime, H prime, I prime. You'll notice there's a second part of the directions here. It says to determine whether or not the figures are congruent. And really all that's asking is, based on what kind of transformations you just performed, are they isometric or not? Hopefully you remember that word from earlier this unit. Isometric transformations are the ones that maintain your side lengths and your angle measures, parallel and perpendicular lines, all the good stuff, are isometric. And translations, reflections, and rotations are isometric transformations. So as long as those are the types of transformations that you're using to get from the pre-image to the image, you can conclude that the two triangles must be congruent to each other. Let's look at another one. So looking at these two triangles, they're clearly in different orientations. The pre-image has point J pointing down, whereas on the image, J prime is kind of pointing to the right. This looks like a rotation to me, specifically a rotation of 90 degrees, because I went approximately one quadrant away, and counterclockwise, because I went opposite the direction of the clock. So if I were to rotate triangle JKL 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin, it would end up right here. You could figure that out using the rule for 90 degrees counterclockwise rotations, which would be negative Y positive X. So this is now in the correct orientation, to get to my image, but it's not quite in the right place. I need to move it to the right and down. Specifically, I need to go to the right, one, two, and down, one, two, three, four, five. So I can say that I also need to translate using the rule x minus two, y minus five. And since I only used rotations and translations to perform this composition, I can conclude that those two triangles must be congruent. On our next example, I see two triangles in a different orientation again. O was pointing down, but now it's pointing to the left. That looks like a rotation. So if I were to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, it would end up right here. So this would be ghost O, this would be ghost N, and this would be ghost M. Again, I'm not actually calling them M prime and O prime and stuff because those already exist. This is just my placeholder to get me from where I started to where I'm supposed to end up. So if this is ghost O, and this is ghost N, and this is ghost M, then I notice that it's not actually in the right orientation to just translate it down to be where the image is. Instead, I'm going to have to reflect it in the x-axis. Because ghost M and M prime, they're both two units away from the x-axis. Ghost O and O prime are both four units away from the x-axis and n prime and ghost n are both nine units away from the x-axis. So I can reflect this purple triangle to become the image. You might have done this a different way though. You actually could have done it backwards. If you prefer, you can rotate it counterclockwise and end up here. And then you would reflect that in the y-axis to end up at the image. So sometimes there's going to be more than one correct answer more than one correct composition of transformations to get you to the right answer. 
In fact, there was a way to do this with only one transformation instead of a composition. To get from triangle MNO to triangle M prime O prime N prime, you actually could have just reflected in the line Y equals X. So the transformation of reflecting in the line Y equals X is equivalent to a 90 degree rotation followed by a reflection in the axis. So actually, no matter which way you're thinking about it, whether you're saying that it's a rotation and a reflection or just a reflection, all of those are isometric transformations and therefore these two triangles must be congruent. I want you to pause the video and see if you can figure out this last one on your own. What is the composition of transformations that would map triangle PQR onto triangle P prime, Q prime, R prime? Well, as you might expect, there's more than one way to do this. You could do it in two transformations if you reflect it over the line y equals x, and then translate that using the rule x plus 5, y plus 6. Alternatively, since we just learned that reflecting in the line y equals x is equivalent to a 90 degree rotation followed by a reflection in the axis, you could have done those two steps first and then a third step of translating to get to triangle P prime, Q prime, R prime. No matter which combination of all that you chose to do, these two triangles would be congruent because it was a composition of isometric transformations. If we had used dilations or a shrink or a stretch at any point in this process, then we would not be able to say that those two triangles were congruent to each other, and we'll learn a whole lot more about that in second semester. And that's all you need to know about compositions of transformations, and actually all you need to know about transformations in general. This video wraps up Unit 4. In our next unit, we're going to be learning how to describe triangles and how to prove that they're congruent to each other.